All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Corey Dowds, the Ayurveda, I'm a Vedic astrologer. Okay, so I wanted to share a couple more Prajna examples. If you follow my channel, you know, I talk a lot about Prajna. It's a system of, uh, it's called orary astrology in the West, but when we do birth charts, we're looking at the past, the when you were born. But if you don't even know your birth chart, you can have an a question answered right in the moment by Prajna. Um, this is, Prajna literally means just a question. So in the old days, if you just went up to an astrologer and asked them a question while they were sitting there, they could answer it without having to even know your birth chart just by reading the chart of that moment, as well as reading the omens and other things that relate to your question. So I have a playlist of videos on Prajnas, so you can look for that. And I especially, uh, I just for some reason focused a lot on lost objects. That's what a lot of people have hired me for. So I wanted to bring up these as two more examples of how we can use astrology to literally find lost objects, which is something that is very annoying, right? I find that very annoying. I hope that by doing this work, maybe I somehow improve my karma for lost objects in the future, right? <laughs> okay, and um, all right, let's share the screen, even though I like, really like the lighting that we have right now. <clears throat> okay, so, um, all right, so this is a chart of someone who lost their snake, so that's what was really cool, um, just kind of unique, right, like you're not going to get asked that, there's nothing in an old text that says exactly how to find a lost snake, <laughs> um, and so I had to be creative here, and that's what I love to do. So I was asked this question, um, yeah, last year or 2019, yeah. Um, first off, Capricorn is what was rising on the ascendant. Now Capricorn is actually the sign of the Makara. It's called Makara in India, the Makara Rashi. Makara literally means a crocodile or a big, massive, aquatic animal that's scaly and dragon-like. Um, so Capricorn is actually a major sign of snakes and reptiles. Also Scorpio, though. Scorpio is a serpent sign as well. Um, so it's kind of neat that Capricorn was rising with Saturn in Capricorn, the sign of gators and crocs being massive lizards. So it kind of relates to snakes on some level. Um, but I'm not like perfectly. I get that. Um, now, the... Ascendant Lord being in the Ascendant with K2 was good. It strengthened it. Um, let me pull up my notes. I don't know if you guys are going to even see this in the video recording, so I'll read it out for you. But they asked, you know, where is my lost snake? So what's really funny is that this was a woman who lives in New Orleans who asked me this question. And I have already made previous videos about how New Orleans is ruled by the Capricorn sign. Made an entire video about that. And uh here we have capricorn rising the rising is the questioner you see that's literally saying this questioner is asking you something from new orleans <clears throat> and it's about the environment of new orleans your first house has a huge amount to do with your environment um that you'll live in your your ascendant um so yeah so it's kind of neat that she's like a, a woman in new orleans and that this was capricorn rising of all the signs and then so Capricorn is the South. Earth signs are the South. So it was also telling me that, okay, this the snakes went to the South, right? And that makes sense because uh, that's where the warmth is. That's where the heat is, you know? The South is a more warmer direction normally. So if you're a reptile and you're in a random stranger's house, you're gonna probably naturally <clears throat> gravitate to the South, right? <clears throat> uh, and Earth signs in general represent the South, right? Aries is the fourth house though. The fourth house is the treasured beloved object. A lot of people always just think to use the second house for lost objects. Here, the fourth house really showed it. Um, the fourth house is the, has the moon in it. That's what's so cool is the moon rules the creeping form. Parashara, Sage Parashara tells us that the moon rules the creeping form of life. So there are life forms. I, I talked about this in the Who Stole the Peaches video, how quadrupeds would be raccoon and biped. Um, if you have a bird, you'll have the uh, 
Mercury and the sun. They rule the bird form, the sky going form. Um, moon rules the creeping form. So snakes, worms, and things like that. Um, so we see moon in the fourth. That makes a lot of sense for a prajna on a lost snake. And it's in Aries. Aries is the east. Fire signs are the east. So I had a confluence of east. So we're looking at southeastern direction, right? Um, you just it can, you can just naturally blend those two, the first and the fourth. Um, this does work pretty well. I've talked about that before. So you have the uh, southeast as a direction to look for. We've already established that for this person. The moon, oh yeah, and then I already said that about the moon, the fourth. And then, um, so I said it would be found. I said that these snakes will be found because the moon, the creeping form, the snakes, the beloved treasured precious item in the fourth house is applying to Saturn, her, the ascendant Lord. So she will get them. It is in a secretly unfriendly manner. So she has to go back and look for it and put some effort in, but she will get the, uh, she will get her snakes back. I also said this because the moon was trining a really strong Jupiter in the 12th house. Also by having a really nice benefic Jupiter in the 12th house, it shows that the lost thing will have a good outcome, you know, or it shows a good outcome to it. What's funny is uh, she, she, you know, asked me. So she, this is showing that the moon trying to Jupiter is showing that, okay, you're going to ask an astrologer who's actually going to be able to do astrology and help you find this. And that's shown by the awake Jupiter connecting. So it's really funny is in the best, not every time, you don't always need that to have a good result from Prajna, but in the best Prajnas I've ever done for people, you can, I can even see in the Prajna how they're going to get such a, like how I'm going to be able to help them. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Not like me as in, oh, I'm just great. Just how the astrologer is going to be able to help them, to be clear. Um, so where was I? Yeah, so she reached out to a Jupiter person who gave her some advice on where to look. And um, I said that they were also likely in a neglected place, like a laundry room, like just a cold, wet, damp, ignored place because of that moon applying to Saturn. Um, Saturn rules neglected areas, laundry rooms, bathrooms, or things like that. So I told her to definitely check there. And um, in a dull red, I also said it would be in a red colored environment. There'll be some red colored things, like just in that environment where the snake is close because of Aries ruling the red color. And I said she would get it back in less than three days because of the moon being within three degrees of Saturn in a Chararachi. And yeah, so she wrote me back less than three days later and told me, uh, I think it was later that same day, I can't remember, but she told me, yeah, it turned out the snakes were in the, uh, in the most southeast part of the house. They were in the uh, southeast direction. So we nailed the direction. They were past a red thing. She didn't specify that, whatever, it was a message. Um, <clears throat> past a red thing. So there was some sort of red item in the area and on a printer, in a neglected area in the most southeast part of the house, they were on a, uh, on a table under, or it was a, it's not clear here from the Instagram message, but there was a table and they were under a post. I don't know what, what that part, how that part might relate. Um, so yeah, that's the gist of it, is that, yeah, it did turn out that the direction was right. The fact that she would get them was right. She just had to go back to this person's house. So basically uh, she had left that person's house um, and in a hurry or something, or like maybe had to stay the night, I forget what it was, but, and then she had to go back to the snakes and they weren't where she kept them. You know what I mean? So she was totally lost as like where they go, they could be totally out, they could have gone out of the house or they could still be in the house. And snakes are something that can just hide so well inside a crack in your house that you really might not be able to get them back. So this was kind of a very fun project to do. And it turned out to be right. She did get the snakes back and they were in the general direction that the astrologer uh, and that the chart showed. So that's really cool. Um, all right, so now here's one more Prajna. This happened to me just a month, or, yeah, like literally a month ago, December 11th, 2020. I hadn't been to the beach in a week or two and I was just enjoying my afternoon. It was 3.30, I went, oh, I'm gonna go to the beach and just hang out. It's not a nice out right now, the sun's out. So I went to the beach and I found myself meditating. 
but this was my day off. I was really out of it. It's not what it was like I was oh, like really hardcore. I was just kind of, you know, all right, I'm going to meditate because this is what I do. And, and then I even like lay down and read a little bit. And I was, so I was kind of daydreaming. I was just kind of out of it. And I got up and went back home. And I guess I had, you know, you have to take your wallet and your things out of your pockets if you're going to sit and meditate properly. So I put my phone and keys and wallet somewhere. And I guess when I got up, it had fallen and I had not noticed it because the sand is so soft. You don't hear something when it hits the ground. So I basically left my wallet or lost my wallet and I got home was like, where is it? But I was pretty sure it was at the beach, right? Because of that. Um, but as I realized it was, you know, as I was driving home, I was like, well, I could have maybe never even brought it. So it might be at the house or whatever, but it was definitely worrying me because I had a lot of money in it and it's your wallet and you don't ever want to lose your wallet in a public place, right? Um, Folly Beach is not like this, this perfect beach. There are all kinds of people that uh, could have come up and stolen it. Okay, so I got home, like I was already kind of real, like, er, like emotionally invested in urgently looking through my house to make sure I didn't just leave it at home. So I checked all my normal spots. It was nowhere to be found. Ah, I went back and checked the car. The car didn't say it wasn't anywhere in my car either. None of my normal spots where I dropped my wallet, it wasn't at. So I casted a prajna because I didn't want, I was so tired. I was wanting to go home and take a nap. That was one reason I left the beach was because like, I was like, yeah, oh, that's right. I was like, yeah, I'm so sleepy. I want to go home and just take a nap. <laughs> so I did not want to go back to the beach if I didn't absolutely have to, you know, that feeling when you're just really sleepy, but oh my God, my wallet's there. So I had to cast a prajna. <laughs> Crazy Corey had to use astrology uh, to decide if it was worth it to get out of bed <laughs> or to just stay in bed and I'll find the wallet in the house later. So I, I casted a chart. Lo and behold, Taurus was rising. Taurus is the sign of one's liquid assets, one's cash flow, one's um, wallet and their resources that they need to survive. How funny is that? Um, it's also a fixed sign. And when there's a fixed sign rising, the item, the lost item is always in the place that was last seen times. So I knew it was back in the place that was last seen. That helped me confirm it. And then because the ascendant Lord Venus was over in the seventh house, it meant I'm going to have to go way back over, you know, far away again. And it was in a water sign. So I would have to go to the water. I had to go back to the beach. Your wallet is at the beach. You see what it's saying? The fact that, then the fact that the moon was applying to Venus was good. That meant, okay, I'm going to get the wallet, right? Um, it wasn't separating. Now, I know already that I'm going to have to go back to the beach. Um, the seventh Lord, Mars, is in the 12th house. So that's showing us that the per like the another party a seventh house party has the lost item in their possession you see it's also saying the other person is going to give it up easily they're going to 12 house just surrender it the wallet easily they're not going to try to steal it or take it and that also works in battle prajnas too like who's like who's going to surrender more quickly that same principle um <clears throat> So I knew that someone else had the wallet in their possession because that moon had applied to Venus and also because the moon was the third house Lord. So it meant like a peer, a third house person, a neighbor, a teammate, a peer, a fellow beach lover um, has the wallet and is going to apply to me. You see, my Venus is going to apply to me in the seventh house. If I go back there, he'll give it to me is basically what that means. So um, I started heading back when I saw that, right? I started hitting the road. All right, well, someone else is going to already probably has it and is waiting for me to come. And uh, yeah, then I also saw that the moon was applying to Venus. Um, oh, sorry, I already established that. The Venus, along with that, Venus was applying to Jupiter, <clears throat> which is a benefic planet, meaning that something good will work out as a result of this. So I was pretty certain that I would find it without much effort and in a more gentle benefit kind of way, like Venus and Jupiter and the moon do. Although, although the moon was a malefic here and it was waning. 
So I hurried back to it. And sure enough, at the beach, there was a guy looking around for someone who had lost a wallet, right? You know, and he was looking at me and he was like, oh, you. And he was literally pointing at me like, you, yeah, you, there it is. There's your wallet. You're the guy with the wallet. Like he just was looking for someone to show back up. And sure enough, I showed back up and he was pointing at me, telling it. And this is what's funny is that he was pointing. So like he is just a unique character quality that he decided to point so much, you know what I mean? Because, uh, well, just that struck me as unique. And, um, you know, the seventh house sign Scorpio, which describes the person Scorpio is described as sharp and pointy. That's literally how Scorpio is described. It has a pointy tail, a stinger, you know? So it's just so funny that the Graha is even like, you know, kind of in, evoked him to do this certain sort of body language. That's how Prajna stuff works. You really want to get your right brain involved. Um, and the left brain is already going to be involved in the math and this stuff. But when you get the right and left brain involved, that's when your mind really becomes super conscious and you can start to perceive things that are even more than normal mind can perceive. Um, and the, the right brain, the subconscious mind is so much more powerful than the conscious mind. So we need to learn to trust those feelings and um, it's part of being an astrologer. So then also um, what's really neat is he told me like, he's like, oh, I was so afraid to touch it or do anything with it. And that's really hilarious because the problem is showing Mercury is kind of like the plan of your wallet. It's uh, mercurial skins and devices and holding, the holding of the, the, the wealth was shown with that Mercury. And it was in the eighth house, which is the second from the seventh. So you see the, the seventh house party was in possession, second house, possession of the, the Mercury wallet. But the sun and K2 Mercury there shows that uh, sun was shaming Mercury. So he would have been ashamed to take that wallet home. So I knew that he wasn't going to do that. So he won't, he wants to make sure someone's going to get this wallet who really deserves it. He doesn't want to be ashamed of, you know what I mean, of doing the wrong thing here. So even that little detail was shown and did come true. All right. So that's a fun project example for you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.